Hello and welcome to Ketterick Builds. We're back with another episode of Satisfactory. Last time we left off with uh, getting our steel production up and running. And off camera I set up just a little bit of production here because we're going to need uh, quite a few steel parts. We're going to need some of these steel beams once we unlock Logistics Mark III, or actually two unlock Logistics Mark III. But also that's how we're going to get our Tier 3 belts. And we're going to need a lot of these steel pipes here in order to unlock a lot of the upcoming milestones and for some of the other production. And so we set up a little bit of a factory here just so I didn't have to make them all by hand. And all I did was slap down three constructors on each side uh, because this is going to be able to handle 270 uh, steel per minute once we get everything all up and running. The steel beams take 60 ingots per minute and so that's 60 120 180 and then on the other side here we've got 30 per minute for another 90 and so that's perfect because a tier 3 belt provides 270 items per minute and so once we get mark 3 logistics unlocked and have tier 3 belts this is going to be the perfect little factory uh, for us and we've just had both of these components going into their own storage bin here uh, giving us the materials that we need to progress our research. And then if we head on up onto our second floor here, we can see the only other thing which I've done off camera here, which is set up our iron rod factory. We talked about this in the previous episode, I believe. And all I've done is go ahead and put up a bunch of constructors on either side here with which we're going to be able to feed our iron ingots in and create iron rods and so iron rod production takes 15 and makes 15 so it's a fairly easy calculation and we've set this up to be able to run a full 120 belt on either side of our iron ingots producing 240 iron rods per minute which will feed into this container here as kind of a buffer and we'll be able to take that right down here and get rid of this manual setup that we've been running. So actually, I think I forgot to hook that up. So let's go ahead and get rid of this belt coming out of this storage container. And we're gonna bring this production straight down here. And just like that, we've got a little bit of uh, iron rods already up there from our test to make sure that I hooked all the belts and stuff up. And you can see that comes into the factory that we've already got running here to produce rotors since we are going to continue to need quite a few rotors as we progress through this series and then because we've been clearing so many different pieces as we've gone i've left our biofuel production set up here so i can drop leaves and wood into this storage and have it crank through and create biofuel for us you can see we've got quite a bit of solid biofuel and so we're just piping that down here and we're gonna use it to fuel these two truck stations that I've set up. So today's goal is going to be to finish out our current tier of research and automate some of this truck stuff. So here we've got a truck station set up that's going to accept our iron uh, ingots that we're using to feed up to the second floor here and make iron rods. If we head back up onto the factory floor here, you can see that the iron rods are coming in and going into this storage container and then I just have them right now looping back up into a double storage so that we can feed them back up to the second floor and make iron rods. Since we don't have any deliveries set up right now, everything's empty, but I did test and make sure that I hooked everything up right. And then if we just head over here to the other end of the factory, the truck station that we'd had dropped off initially is still here and this is the truck station where we're gonna deliver our steel so this is all piped into that little steel factory that i showed off already so we've emptied out our truck so that we could manually uh, run this and test things out uh, and so we're going to be testing that out but before we set up the truck course i want to run back over to the main base and get this research kicked off since we've finally made our steel components First things first, let's jump into the hub here and we're gonna get all of these components loaded up real quick and launched so that that timer can start moving down. And so that's gonna unlock Mark III Logistics, which gives us power storage, which is interesting. We might actually want to set one of those up since we do have some fluctuating power. We're also gonna need to expand our power 
production as well at some point here. And so to do that, we're gonna need more coal, which is why I wanted to unlock these Mark III belts. We've got bigger industrial storage containers now, and we've got stackable pipe supports. So all of this is gonna help us build a little bit better, a little bit more efficient setups with the materials we have. We are gonna go ahead and select this next milestone. We've gotta wait for the five minute timer, but we'll be able to come back in here and hit that up here soon as well and finish off the tier. And in order to get to new tiers, we need to unlock the next phase of the space elevator. So we really gotta get all these factories set up that we've been working on here for the last couple of episodes. So we're gonna make a lot of progress on that today. So the first thing I wanna do is start with the steel production. So we're gonna go ahead and head down to our steel factory here and see if we can upgrade that to be a little bit more efficient and set up an automated course for our truck here. So as we come into the factory here, you can see as soon as I pull around here into the truck station, it's gonna start loading me. And in the lower right hand corner there, I've got a truck loading status. And so if I pop out of the truck here, you can see we're stacking steel up here as fast as we can. If I look at the truck station, I mean, we've made quite a bit of steel here. And so once we get a truck course set up, this guy's just gonna keep going around and bringing that back up to our base here. It's not as efficient as maybe a belt might be, but I think it's gonna do good for us. And you can see here at some point that truck station had been completely full. And so we built up a buffer of steel ingots here. One of the things that we can do now that we've got this all set up is we can actually upgrade our miners now. So we can double the production of this facility simply by coming in here and making these Mark I miners, Mark II miners. So we're gonna go ahead and upgrade this first one here. And that's going to allow us to make quite a bit more coal per minute. That's gonna go from 60 to 120 coal per minute. Unfortunately, it looks like we will have to replace down our belt. But just like that, we've got 120 coal coming out of that one. And similarly, we're gonna go ahead and upgrade these other two. So we're gonna grab this one next here. I'm gonna wait for this coal to move off the belt because I really don't want it in my inventory. And then we'll go ahead and reconnect our conveyor belt up here. And this should be outputting 120 coal per minute now as well. Now that's gonna cause us a little bit of a backlog here as we come into these other machines. As we only have enough of these smelters set up for handling the amount of materials we had before. So we're gonna come down here and add a few more, which requires us to put a few more of these foundations down as well. So as always, let's get our trusty chainsaw out, clear some room and put down some foundations. And I think the plan is gonna be to just slap down three more of these foundries here, right in the same lineup that we've got. That will put us a little bit over production, but not too bad. We'll be pretty close. The output will be at a full 270 belt, but we'll only be feeding 240 materials in. And so that can't be helped at this point, but as miners continue to improve and other efficiencies, we may be able to ramp those miners up and get more materials in here. But for the time being, this is gonna work out. We do need a few more of these modular frames. And so we're gonna go ahead and craft a few of those up. Luckily, we brought some supplies with us. All right, we've got these three foundries built now. And so we're gonna go ahead and start bringing our materials in. Uh, I haven't gone up and updated the miner for the iron just yet. We're gonna get everything hooked up down here so that I don't have to worry about it since we're already down here. We'll make the long hike up to the top here in a minute. But what I'm gonna do is just split that iron right at this first splitter and we should bring uh, half of it out this way for these three and or I guess it'll be a third of it, but it should all stack up here appropriately pretty quickly. And we're gonna bring the coal down as well in a similar fashion. We just need to get a splitter set up here 
and we'll just continue that down in what I like to call the lazy distribution method where it just goes in a line and so this last uh, machine down here is going to get the least amount of the coal so it'll probably be the one that doesn't run very efficiently but that is okay. What we do need to do is upgrade all of this uh, iron income inbound line to Mark III. So in order to do that, we're gonna jump down here to our handy dandy truck. We're gonna take a stack of these and I am going to just real quick make some steel beams here to give us the materials we need to upgrade all of those belts to Mark III. So hopefully we've got enough of these steel beams in hand and we're gonna be able to upgrade all of our belts here to mark three for the iron and then we'll head up to the top here and get that miner upgraded as well well that was quite the hike but we made it and we're gonna drop this miner in just like so and much like below, I think we're gonna go ahead and deconstruct this belt. We've had problems with them reconnecting automatically, but it's easy enough to do the upgrades. And we had enough steel beams here to get this all up and running. And look at that, we've got 240 iron per minute shooting down uh, the pipe here. I will be curious at some point to see how much energy it's gonna cost me to overload this and try and get 270 per minute out of here we're not gonna mess with it just now though we want to just get this factory going and get the automation moving because we got a lot of work to do if we're gonna have a chance of unlocking the space elevator luckily we've got this handy dandy electric line we can take back down i'll admit off camera i forgot that was there i walked all the way back up there and all the way around to get up to our iron mine such an idiot sometimes so with all the belts hooked up we've just got to give this thing some power real quick and pipe these into the truck station all right so just like that we have got all of our foundries hooked up we've got six of them running here or won't be quite at 100 percent efficiency uh materials coming in a little bit less than our total capacity to process them but we've got a mark three belt mostly full bringing steel into here i don't know that our tractors are going to be able to keep up with this anyway so that'll be kind of interesting to uh see how that works but we've also reworked this platform a bit i suppose i should try to pick up as much of the steel and get it into the truck factory as we can no sense leaving all of this material sitting in a chest on the ground for any length of time that's for sure and we'll keep this in our inventory. In fact, we'll bring an inventory back since we're going to be driving back to the factory at some point here anyway, just to give that a little bit of extra room to keep moving. And so what we want to do is bring our tractor on up here. We centered our truck uh, station here just a little bit to allow us to kind of pull in and pull out without having to turn around so oddly. And what I want to do now is a honk our horn oh that's cool left click is honk we're gonna push a v which is normally our scan tool but when you're in a vehicle this is the autopilot tool and so what we're gonna do is hold v down and come down here to our start recording option and you can see in the lower right hand corner we are recording and so we're gonna just go ahead and make a little path here i'm gonna go a little bit slower than i might normally drive just to make sure we don't tip over do anything crazy and unfortunately it is dark already so we're kind of trying to figure out exactly where to go um you'd think i'd been over here so many times i'd know where to go but uh we will need to spend a little bit of time figuring that out and this thing drives so incredibly slow up this steep hill that it's not really that much of a problem we want to try and avoid hitting too many of the jagged terrain features i think the trucks or tractors i should say are fairly good at staying on the course but we also uh we haven't done a lot of it yet Ooh, and this fog is really going to help us drive straight so this is going to be my first time really setting up a tractor course 
using the autopilot here in probably a couple of years. Uh, I didn't use a lot of the tractors in my previous saves, so we'll see how this goes. Hopefully, we're going to tell you how to do this right, and I won't have to re-record this entire segment of the episode. Now, we're going to be taking this straight up to our factory. We've got the truck station all set up there for the steel. And so all we should have to do is drive right on into the unload area and pause for a moment. I don't think we need to actually do anything specific other than be in the unload area. And the autopilot is going to recognize that and stop to unload. So we're now fully unloaded and we're just going to continue driving our path. Now, as we head back, I'm going to try and hug the other side of the road. I should have done a little bit better job of paying attention to that on the way up. I think we did cross and kind of cut this corner right here a little bit tight. But the goal being is that I want to make sure that my different tractor courses, if I do put more than one tractor out here to do different things, are hopefully not going to crash into each other. Well, that We hit that rock pretty steep and we're going to have a pretty jagged course there that's okay we recovered oh my goodness that's gonna be a terrible course with any luck i'll be able to come by and maybe uh take out some of these rocks with my chainsaw or something but uh that was definitely unfortunate for pathing as i think our tractor is going to attempt to follow that uh twisty curvy path every time he comes through here now, we're not going to send more than one tractor down to the steel factory, I don't think. And even if we were, I don't know that there's a lot I can do about this. Uh, there's just a kind of a narrow path to get down here. Maybe at some point we'll build official roads. But for the time being, we're just going to kind of follow this through like so. And just like this, we're going to stop. Oh my goodness, there's a spider attacking our tractor. We're going to pause the recording for a second here. I think this is where I'm going to actually finish the recording. And so our autopilot is active right now. And so... Finish recording. All right. So we should have a path. So I'm not sure what happened to the previous recording, but we had some kind of an issue. So we're re-recording a course right now. And I just realized that we didn't have the recording going from the beginning. So we are almost back up to the steel factory here. And we are going to see what happens here. These animals in our way is uh, unfortunate. But we're going to just bring this right back in here like so. And this time we are going to do a finish recording rather than a pause recording. And so I think like that, we should be able to hop out now and let this guy do its thing. So he's all full and going to take off and head back up here and hopefully make it all the way up to the base on his own. So we're gonna follow along a little bit on foot. We're gonna cheat a little bit and uh, use the wire here and see if we can get up here and ahead of him and uh, go check and see that he makes it to the steel uh, drop off point and starts unloading appropriately. All right, it looks like we can ride the lines a little bit faster than our truck can get up here. But I do see the icon moving, so I expect to see this uh, tractor, truck, whatever it's called, get up here pretty quick. And here he comes. So with any luck, he's going to dump that steel off right here. It looks like we're not processing quite fast enough, though, to be honest. So let's come over here and see if we can help this thing out a little bit. We don't have enough steel beams. So what I'm curious about is if this guy is going to wait to unload all the way or if he's going to sit here until he's empty. I'm hoping he sits there till he's empty, to be honest. We'll find out in a second here. But we're going to grab some of these tier three 
And uh, nope, he's off to the races again. Actually, that probably makes sense. That's going to give us the opportunity, though, to up improve, improve our infrastructure here. Because I am curious to see how well that uh, tractor is going to keep up with this facility. And now that we've got a full 270 getting piped through here, we should get enough materials to keep everything else going. Now, I don't need to upgrade these subsequent belts, but I'm going to just to make sure that we're getting material back here as fast as possible in case these are ever run empty. We can get everything going and they require 60 a minute in. Um, these belts will be fine for that. So just like that, we've got automated steel production capabilities. Uh, we do have extra steel on us. Um, which I can actually go and get rid of some of just by dropping into these machines that were empty. That will help kickstart things as well as get it all out of my inventory. I do see that that truck is still moving over here, which gives me encouragement that it is functioning appropriately. So it turns out that we forgot to upgrade the belts on our coal to Mark III after we combined two Mark II belts together. And so we weren't providing enough coal to our foundries, which means we weren't making enough steel to keep things moving here. So these end foundries weren't seeing any coal whatsoever. So we've updated that here and we've got a good amount of steel coming in now. And it looks like the tractor is sufficiently getting loaded up here. He's probably got some logic that if he detects it's empty, he's gonna stop. We've got a couple of pause points here. And so he's all good and loaded up. Um, not a full load, but definitely more than last time. So our truck system is working successfully. And uh, that was uh, that was a lot of fun to set up. I won't lie. So the next thing that we need to do, we've got two things that we need to do. One is our power infrastructure needs to get upgraded. So we're going to jump up here and we're going to see about upgrading this coal set up here to a Mark II miner. That's going to allow us to double our production output here for the power grid. Luckily, we've got just enough materials to do this upgrade. And that's gonna provide 240 coal per minute, which means we're gonna need to upgrade these belts all the way down to the power system. So we're going to have to run all the way back up to the factory and pick up some of these steel beams so that we can upgrade all of those belts all the way down to the power grid and put together some more coal generators. For simplicity's sake, I've gone ahead and just duplicated the current coal setup here. We've added four more generators here to the line. And what I've realized in the process of doing this is these coal generators are only requiring 15 per minute. So technically, we've got enough coal being supplied here to double this up yet again. I've also realized we're being extremely inefficient with our water. Uh, for some reason, I thought these required 50 per minute. They only actually consume 45 per minute. So we can store 50 cubic meters, but we're actually only consuming 45 cubic meters per minute, which means for this number of coal generators, we're only actually using 360 cubic meters of water at the moment, which if I jump over here and look, each one of these produces 120. So we've got one more of these than we need, but all of our tubing is kind of a mess right now. And so at some point when we need to expand this again, I think we'll run one main water line down and branch these off a little bit more appropriately so that it looks nice. But let's be honest, for the time being, we just wanted to get our power grid into a better state. You can see that we're consuming about half of our power grid. We're producing 600 megawatts consistently with our coal generators. And then we've got the 100 megawatts with the two biofuel reactors that auto shut down or come on as needed. And so you can see here also that the blue line is what we could technically consume if everything in our factory were to start running. And so we have a lot of inefficiency or a lot of parts of the factory that aren't running right now, uh, primarily because we don't have any iron ingots being piped into our factory, which most of that setup 
requires iron. And so that's the last piece of the puzzle here that we need to get worked out, which is to head up to our original starting area here and automate this iron and get that over to our new factory as well. Now, as long as we're up here, the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and kick off this final piece of research for tier four and get that out of the way. So I'm extremely excited to unlock the hyper tubes. This is actually one of the things I haven't yet gotten a chance to play with. They came out after the last time that I played Satisfactory. And so we'll definitely be putting some of these in our factory and maybe to get to common places. Uh, it could be really nice to have a hyper tube set up to get from this area here down to our uh, power generation and onto that steel factory. I think it's gonna be a little bit easier than always having to ride the power lines. So our next step is to automate the iron ingot production here. This factory here has been really helpful to us in getting the basic materials up and running. However, it's kind of in the way. And honestly, we're making most of these materials now as part of their manufacturing processes. And so what I wanna do is we're gonna come in here and actually turn this miner off which should allow this ore to drain out as we create some items here in this factory. And so we'll just grab some of the stuff that we're gonna need to have on hand as we go through construction. And that should allow that ore to drain out. And then we're gonna come over here as well and do the same thing with this entire setup. And this should drain out quite a bit faster. And what I think we're going to do is build another one of these awesome sinks temporarily and just pipe all of these materials straight into it because we want to completely tear down this structure. And what I'd like to do is convert this area into all iron ingot production. So we have uh, three total pure nodes here. And once we upgrade all three of these to Mark II miners, that's gonna be 720 iron ingots per minute. And so that should definitely feed our factory over here for the next few stages of growth. So let's get some of these additional buildings here out of our way real quick, as I think we're gonna convert this entire area into a production facility. Now I'm not gonna get rid of the hub just yet because we have a chest there that's holding a lot of materials. But what we're going to do is put down an awesome sink here alongside this factory. And we're gonna use our brand new Mark III belt here and start by running all of these screws directly into the awesome sink. Now all of the awesome sinks should be synced together. So you can see we are generating 240 points per minute here. Points until next coupon is 9,400 and some odd. So we've got 18 coupons we could print out here. And those numbers are gonna match up exactly with this other side here. And so our current strategy is to allow all of this to run out. And then we're gonna pick up these materials as the uh, inputs run dry just to get the uh, get everything cleaned up and out of our way so that we can lay out a proper factory here and it helps when you actually upgrade the belt inside that's attached to the storage to be a mark three belt as well so you can see we've got quite a few more points per minute coming up here as we crank through all of these screws so we've got a lot of materials to go here and I don't have anywhere I want to store uh, multiple containers worth of some of these objects. So we're going to let that go. And what I'm going to do is put down a little container over here. Personal storage box. And we're going to store just a handful of things. Such as some of these plates and some of these iron rods that I know we're going to need. And maybe one or two containers of screws just to have in my inventory but we really don't use screws that often. And so that's gonna be sufficient storage for us for a little while here while we tear all of this down. And so while I work on tearing this section down off camera, we'll check back in next episode and build out our iron ingot automation and get a truck running over to the factory for that as well.
We've managed to complete quite a bit in this episode. All of tier four research has been completed and we've almost got all of the pieces in place to unlock the next stage of the space elevator. If you've enjoyed today's episode, drop a like, it helps the channel out immensely. That's all for today. Kederk.